Alright, so hey guys, and welcome to my review of Mrs. Beefcake, aka Hildrain, our shield based tank frame. So, to get Hildrain, you first have to get a blueprint from Little Quack in Fortuna, and then you have to farm all the other parts from the Exploiter Orb in Orbvalis. Now, as I've mentioned already, Hildren is a bit of a beefcake, so even though she only starts with 75 health, which goes up to 225 at rank 30, she starts off with 450 shields, which go up to 1575 at rank 30. She also sports 300 armor, which is not too bad, but it doesn't really matter for Hildrim because shields don't get the benefit of armor, only health gets the benefit of armor. She doesn't have any energy whatsoever because of her passive, where she uses her shields to cast abilities rather than her energy. She has a sprint speed of 1, which used to be average, but nowadays most frames are faster than that, so I would consider it to be below average, and she comes with 4 polarities, 2 in a D polarities, a D polarity in the Exodus slot, and a dash polarity in the Aura slot. Now, there's a lot to cover when it comes to Hildrin's passive, because this playstyle would just not work without a couple of tweaks. So firstly, as I've mentioned already, Hildrin uses her shields rather than her energy to cast abilities. Now, this is a bit of a downside in that whenever you use an ability and drain a little bit of your energy, you will reset the timer on shield recharge, but it also means that Hildrin can replenish her shields by picking up energy orbs. On top of that, Hildrin has shield gating, so whenever she runs out of shields, she will be invulnerable for 30 seconds, and this will reset once you hit full shields again. She also has better overshields than other frames because they prevent slash and toxin procs from bypassing her shields and damaging her health directly, though this is only for overshields, not normal shields. She doesn't use a standard dodge roll, she uses a limbo light dash that spawns two shields on her shoulders and I'm not entirely sure what the benefit of it is, it might mitigate some damage, but once again, I'm not entirely sure. And finally, when you equip Hildren with the new Larkspur Argan, you will have more ammo than other frames. Now, Hildren's first ability is called Bellfire, where she pulls out what is essentially an exalted static core. This is a full-on exalted weapon, like for example Mesa's Peacemaker, so it can be modded separately in the arsenal screen. The weapon does pure electricity damage with 500 damage per shot when you simply tap it, or you can charge it, which can take up to 2 seconds, which will double the amount of damage the weapon does. Each shot from the Bellfire, whether it is uncharged or charged, also has a splash radius of 3 meters, which is quite nice. And even though the supporting stats on the Bellfire aren't that great, the weapon only comes with a 5% crit chance, a 1.5 times crit multiplier, and a 10% status chance, it can do some serious damage. Now one kind of annoying thing about Bellfire is that even if you charge it the tiniest bit, it will slow you down to a crawl for a solid second and a half, as if you were fully charging it. You can see it right here, I tap both shots, yet the second one slows me down as if I were charging the weapon. Though this is more of a personal thing, it depends on how good you are at simply tap firing the weapon and it does get better with practice as you use the weapon more and more. Now the damage of Bellfire is of course affected by the mods you put on it in the arsenal screen, but also power strength, so the more power strength you have, the more damage the weapon is gonna do. And finally we have the shield cost of the weapon, which seems to be a little bit all over the place, but it's about 50 shields or overshields to pull the weapon out, about 100 shields or overshields to tap fire it, and roughly about 300 to fully charge it. The stat screen actually says it should be 75 shields or overshields per shot, but I find it to be more around 100 even with Streamline, which, by the way, efficiency will affect the shield drain of Hildren's abilities. Hildren's second ability is called Shield Pillage, where she will steal armor and shields from nearby enemies and replenish her own shields while simultaneously cleansing all negative status effects from her and nearby allies. Now, this is kind of like a two-stage ability, so when you first activate it, which costs 150 shields and or over shields, Hildren will send out a wave in a circle that has a radius of 8 meters. And this will cleanse any negative status effects from Hildren and her nearby allies that are hit by the wave. But at the same time, it will also reduce the armor and shields of any enemy hit by the wave by 25%. Once the duration on the wave runs out, or when you press the ability button again, the wave then rushes backwards and restores shields and creates overshields for Hildren based on the amount of armor and shield it stole. And yes, that does mean that it's pretty much useless versus the infested, because the vast majority of them don't have armor and or shields. And this I find really odd, because one of the passives that helps Hildren with this shield-based playstyle is that Slash and Toxin procs won't bypass overshields but you can't reliably generate overshields versus the infested because they don't have armor and or shields. So the faction with the most toxin procs is also the faction that doesn't allow you to create overshields to counter toxin procs. So you either have to slam shield pillage as soon as you get a toxin proc on you, especially at high levels because you don't have a lot of health and you can die very quickly, which by the way drains your shield so it makes you squishier, or you have to run arcane resistance, which almost makes you resistant to toxin procs, or you have to run Arcane Resistance and Antitoxin, so you just can't be affected by a Toxin proc. And you do this on a frame that is a passive mechanic designed to stop this very thing from happening. 
Am I stupid or is that really dumb? But anyway, the shield cost of the ability is affected by power efficiency, the initial radius of the pulse when you first cast it is affected by power range, and the expansion duration of the wave, because the wave will continue expanding after you cast it, is affected by power duration. Now at the same time, this will also make it come back later, because the ability will last for a longer duration, but that's not that big of a deal, because you can reactivate the ability which instantly retracts the wave. And finally, the amount of shields and or armor that's drained per enemy is affected by power strength. Hildren's third ability is called Haven, where she overcharges her shield matrix to link herself to nearby allies and enemies. Now this will do a couple of things, so all linked allies and or companions will get 500 points of maximum shields and have 80% faster shield recharge rate. And on top of all that, they will also gain shield wall, which is the shield gating passive from Hildren, so if their shields are completely depleted, they will become invulnerable for 3 seconds. If at any point Hildrin either deactivates Haven or she wanders out of the range of Haven, which at base is a 15 meter radius, all the extra shields on your allies and companions will become overshields. Also, any ally that's linked to Hildrin will drain 5 shields per second from her. Now, Hildrin and any allies that are linked to Hildrin via Haven will also link to nearby enemies. Now, this will first of all deal 200 radiation damage per second to each enemy linked, but second of all also drain 25 shields and or overshields per enemy per second from Hildrin. And that's pretty much all the ability will do. It will link you to nearby allies, grant them extra shields, make them recharge shields faster and give them shield gating while simultaneously linking to nearby enemies and doing a little bit of damage to them. The amount of extra maximum shield capacity your allies will get from Haven as well as the damage Haven will do to linked enemies are both affected by power strength, the shield recharge rate bonus your allies get as well as the rate at which the ability trains your shields are affected by power duration, the range at which you will link to allies as well as the range at which you and your allies will link to enemies enemies are both affected by power range and finally we have power efficiency which will affect the initial activation cost of the ability as well as the rate at which the ability drains shields from you. Now a very important thing to note here is that the shield drain from Haven even if you're just linked to your sentinel will stop your shield recharge so as long as this is active especially if you have a companion that you can link to with you you will have no shield recharge while the ability is active. And Hildren's fourth and final ability is called Aegis Storm, where she takes off the ground and starts floating about. And this will once again do a bunch of stuff, so it will create a pretty sizable orb around you in which enemies will be suspended off the ground, dealt 200 radiation damage per second and occasionally poop out energy orbs. But it also kind of restricts what you can do, so what you can do is still dash around with Hildren's dash, which was luckily patched in because otherwise the movement in Aegis Storm was pretty slow, you can still use Haven to link yourself to nearby enemies and or allies and you can use Balefire, however you cannot use your other guns and you can't use Shield Pillage. Also, when you run out of shields or you simply deactivate the ability, any enemy caught in the massive orb will be slammed into the ground and dealt 500 impact damage. Now, power strength affects both the radiation damage over time as well as the impact based slam damage. Power duration will affect the rate at which the ability drains shields from you. Efficiency will affect the initial activation cost of the ability as well as the rate at which the ability drains shields from you. And finally, power range will affect the size of the aura or the orb that's around you and levitates enemies off the ground. Although there is another way to increase the damage this ability will do, because as you levitate higher off the ground, the area on the ground in which you will levitate enemies will shrink, and the smaller that area is, the more damage the ability will do. And now we come to the conclusion. So, what do I actually think about Hildren? Well, I had all the fun with Hildrin until I unequipped the Larkspur, at which point I realized I was pretty much just using her as a stat stick for the Larkspur to get more ammo. My experience with Hildrin was pretty much the exact opposite of what I go through with most of the frames, where I get the frame, I kind of get the basics done, I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool, and as I play with them more and more, I find these little nuances and little things I can do here and there. And that means that I generally like the frame more as I play with it more. But not with Hildred, unfortunately, because I was really excited when I got her, don't get me wrong, I'm big into tanks, I love playing tanks, I was like, oh my god, a shield-based tank, this is something different, this is gonna be cool. But as I started playing around with her, instead of finding little nuances and tricks I can do, I just found out that I can't use this with this, that's a bit wonky, that doesn't make an awful lot of sense, this doesn't work, you can't do this. The only sort of nuance that I found with Hildrin was the Dragon Key shenanigans, where you reduce her shields by using a decaying Dragon Key so that you can actually regenerate all your shields before your immunity goes away, so the immunity resets, but that's gonna be patched out. I always try to find something that the Warframe is really good at, and I will focus on that and build that Warframe around it, which means that even if the Warframe is not top-notch, I can still have fun with it, but... 
I just feel like I'm running around with the discounted arrows shooting a discount static core. And don't get me wrong, it's not all bad. You know, Bellfire can do good damage, Shield Pillage can save your life, mainly versus the Corpus, because when you're going up against the Grenier, Heavy Gunners will shred you, because their Gorgons do primary impact damage, so they're super effective versus Shields. Which, by the way, this is one really cool thing about Hildren, since she uses Shields, she can tank Corpus techs like a boss, because they have Supras, which do primarily Puncture, which is not very effective versus Shields, so you can tank very high level Corpus techs much better than most other frames. But that unfortunately is as far as I will go when it comes to ability use, because Haven doesn't provide enough of a benefit for you to lose your shield recharge completely while it's active. And finally you have Aegis Storm, this ultimate ability, and I'm unfortunately gonna have to agree with the person that described it as being kind of like Anthem. You can fly around, but that's it. Unfortunately don't remember what I saw that description, but yeah, that made me snort out loud. I don't know, it might just be me really liking health and armor based tanks and all that, but Hildren really didn't click with me, unfortunately. The more I try and do with Hildren, the less I like her, because I keep hitting one roadblock after another. And at the end of the day, when I'm not running around with the Lark Spur, laughing like a maniac, I'm just not having fun. And that is pretty much all I have to say about Hildren, so I thank you very much for watching. As always, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.